the MS-20. We're going to talk about the patch panel of the MS-20. Patch panel gives the impression that it makes the MS-20 modular, but in some cases it's somewhat modular, in other cases it just expands functionality. It's still a great option to have on a synthesizer, and I'm going to show you what some of these inputs do and how they work. Um, let's start off with the total input. The total input is a means to control three different modules of the synthesizer with the same modulation source. The three different modules are the frequency of both oscillators, the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter, and the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. Um, a great way to demonstrate this would be to run a line out from the mod wheel and into the total input. Plugging something into the total input causes these three knobs, which are associated with modulation, to switch their function from what their function was, which was controlling the modulation generator amount to these three modules, and switches it to whatever modulation input is plugged into the total input, which is demonstrated down here in the text that says t.ext, which is total external. So, right now, we have it set up so the mod wheel controls the cutoff frequency of both filters and the pitch of both oscillators. The pitch aspect is controlled in the pitch section, the pitch modulation section, with the top knob. We'll demonstrate. Okay, that is not so impressive, but at the same time, the mod wheel as modulation source is also controlling the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. and the low pass filter. And the great thing about this, and this is why Korg did this, is you are able to control all three sections in varying amounts using these knobs. I'll just um, do this and this. But the main function that this is best for is that you can control both filters at the same time, and that's uh, really an expressive tool. So, that is the benefit of the total input. The next function we're going to look at is the frequency, which controls the pitch of both oscillators. And once you plug something into the frequency input, the envelope generator one control knob turns into the external control knob, which controls how much whatever modulation source you're putting into this input controls the frequency of both oscillators. So that basically makes your mod wheel into a standard pitch wheel. And of course, other things can control the frequency of these oscillators, uh, noise. Um, the modulation generator. I put it into the square wave because it's already set up so that the triangle wave modulates the uh, pitches of the oscillators. So I plugged it into the square wave output of the modulation generator on the patch panel, which is the only place you can get the square wave output of the modulation generator. So then you could have both the square wave and the already preset triangle wave controlling the pitch of the oscillator. Which is pretty cool. The next part we have is the external signal in, and that basically just means whatever you want to plug into the synthesizer that you want to modify using the filters, etc., um, that's where you plug it in. So if you're using drum loops or whatever and you want to have the super cool high pass, low pass filter effects filtering those drum loops, this is where you plug it in. It doesn't have an independent um, volume control. You can add one in a way I will show you in a few minutes, uh, but that's where it goes in. Another function this is great for, you might notice over here on the oscillators, you have a noise option, noise source option. Woohoo, that's awesome. But it's only white noise, and it removes your chance to use oscillator one as a tone source. So what you would do instead of that is to take, we'll say, the pink noise output, plug that into the external signal in, 
and now you have a noise source along with your two tone sources. So that makes it extremely convenient. But of course your convenience is somewhat limited by the fact that, hey, um, that noise is pretty loud and it's kind of drowning out the tone sources, so what do I do? Well, here's where we get into some really interesting and kind of dorky patching to get a relatively simple effect. Okay, we'll say we take this pink noise output. We want to have that mixed with our two tone sources. So we take the pink noise out, plug it into the VCA in. This VCA is your means to control the synthesizer, this little extra VCA. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and I'll show you why right now. So pink noise source into the VCA. We want to control the VCA with some sort of volume knob. And unfortunately, the only volume knob we really have is the mod wheel. So let's use it as a volume knob. Let's plug the mod wheel into the control input of our little extra VCA. Then we take the output and run that back into the external signal in. So our noise source is going into the external signal in like we had it before, but now we have the ability to control the volume with the mod wheel. So here are our two tones. And we want to add pink noise to that. We use the mod wheel as a volume control. Unfortunately, then the mod wheel can't be used for modulation, which is ridiculous. But, you know, everything has kind of a way that you can get around the fact that they crammed a lot into a very small box. And that is one of the things. So that is the benefit of the external signal in is that you can, with patching, use the mod wheel as a control for how much volume whatever is going in the external signal in has. And that's very convenient. And of course, that same mod wheel arrangement can be used with any input source. Um, the next port we have is the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. This is pretty straightforward. It's just like you would imagine it would be. Let's plug it into the mod wheel again, just to be boring. But it shows very plainly how it's controlled or would. Uh, the knob down here at the bottom, which used to be controlling how much envelope generator 2 controlled the high pass filter, now becomes uh, an amount for how much whatever modulation source you have plugged into that input. So here we'll demonstrate it. No effect, but let's turn it up. And that's so you don't have to be up here moving the knob. You can have your hand over here, whatever, controlling the cutoff point of the high pass filter. Of course, just any output here will have the same effect. We can do what we did with the pitch by having the square wave output of the modulation generator coming in uh, to the cutoff point of the high pass filter. And then we can also have the already pre-wired triangle wave and mix them. So that's cool. Or, you know, of course, um, there are envelope, the envelope generator outputs. Um, it is pre-wired to have envelope generator 2 controlling the cutoff point with this particular knob. And then if you plug something in, you can decide that you want envelope generator 1, if I can find it, uh, to control the filter cutoff point. And that way you can free up envelope generator 2 for the VCA or whatever purpose you have for it. So that's very convenient. And of course, any other uh, white noise, pink noise, um, the reverse envelopes from both envelope generator 1 and envelope generator 2 can be directed into the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. And the same goes for the low pass filter. Again, this bottom knob, which normally controls how much envelope generator 2 controls the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. Once something is plugged in here, then all of a sudden this knob controls how much that modulation source controls the cutoff point of that filter. Like so, and of course you can always have... That's the white noise being used as a modulation source for the cutoff point of the low pass filter. And that's really awesome. So you can plug any output in there.